and always a reminder for myself, ana abdukul ajisa da'ifu, miskinu, zalim, jahal. And we ask Allah's infinite rahmah and mercy to be upon us. If not for Allah's grace we would have been ceased to exist. Ask that Allah grant the madad and support of Sultanul Awliya Ma Shaykh Muhammad Nazim Haqqani from his Bahr Muhabbat, the immense oceans of Divinely love that Mawlana Shaykh dispensed upon this earth and upon the hearts of Ashiqeen and Muhibeen. Alhamdulillah a reminder that the holy hadith of Prophet that a Bedouin came into the Jummah and interrupted Sayyidina Muhammad kept asking Sayyidi Ya Rasulullah, when is Qiyamah? Because the yaqeen and the sincerity of servants and companions of Sayyidina Muhammad with such a certainty believing in all the signs and all the teachings in which they surpassed time and space. And so they begin to see from what he teaches they see, they sense and kept asking and interrupting the Jummah that, when is Qiyamah? And then third time said, Ya Rasulullah, when is Qiyamah? Out of fear and, and panic and distress within the heart. And Prophet asked that, what have you prepared for Qiyamah? And the answer is the immense ocean and the reality of muhabbat, that the rules are many. But all that I was capable of preparing was love for Allah and you, for Sayyidina Abu Bakr and Omar signifying the companions. My love for Allah and you Sayyidi Ya Rasulullah and Prophet said, then you'll be with whom you love. From just this holy hadith is an immense ocean that whom you be with whom you love then it's also correct then whom you love will be with you. You carry with a bond your atomic structure, its most powerful bond is a Divine love. As Salaamu Alaikum Warahmatullahi Wabarakatuh This is Shaykh Nurjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream. Every bit counts. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Weak force, nuclear attraction, greater force is a love wanting to come to the nucleus. There has to be a slightly stronger force saying, not right now. Means everything within our elements are built upon this Divine love. Not to love the people know or think they know, but the reality of ishq and the reality of wadud that Allah put within you a mass attraction in which your whole being wants to enter back into Divinely Presence. Means that in every aspect of our reality we look and Allah created us with this Divinely love. And as a result only Allah came into our lives and taught us that your approach to Allah through your heart, that their teachings will ignite, try to ignite the hearts of people in which their heart has an attraction 
there's a softness within the teaching and there's a goodness within the company and the fellowship. As a result it opens the heart and that light and that love enters within the heart. And as a result your soul will draw near them. Your body and nafs may have many ego issues but your soul will draw near them. And if you continue to love and open your heart, the soul of that one will be near you and with you at all times and you carry who you love with your heart. With your heart and soul how they describe it, oh I love you with my heart and soul. Well because the heart is the home of the soul and that which you let it into will affect the soul. If you love bad well then the danger is that badness is affecting the soul and if you love good that goodness is dressing the soul. In the midst of all of these difficulties and all of these examples of all this horrific energies and and uh, events that are happening and, and, and sicknesses that are coming and have come and are coming and non-stop at every, every angle we're seeing difficulties are approaching, everyone senses and feels that. And they begin to ask that what about our youngest ones? Because any, anyone whom has a family because Allah says it's half your faith. To have a family. Why? Because you understand selflessness. It's not any more about you that, oh you can eat and you have a place to sleep and, and you have a sense of belief. As soon as you have a family it's about where they're going to sleep, where they're going to eat, what they're going to eat, where they're going to be safe. And they begin to have a concern that, wh what do we do with our children? During all of this horrific energies, they have one month of complete deprogramming and trying to reorient them in different directions, non-stop bombarding with their mind, with their belief, with their energies. How do we protect them? So this hadith is giving us its medicine. That Prophet prescribed for us that in the first seven years of their life, love them. Because <clears throat> in this you should understand madad and why they teach madad. They teach your children to love you, build the bond of ishq and love so that to draw near to you. <clears throat> Western ideology is completely incorrect. Their understanding of children rearing and raising children is demonic. Most of their foundations were by Satanists in which they did horrific experiments on children and they came out with a whole belief of sexuality and all sorts of demonic, demonic understandings. Islamic belief from Prophet love them. As a result of loving them, nurture them, be with them, sleep near them, embrace them. Why? Because you're training them in madad so that when the child builds a bond with you, loves you, understands that you're a sense of security and passion and compassion for them. As a result of that bond they're drawing near to you. Now look at their other philosophy is that put them in a room and let them scream. They immediately lost the, the bond of relying upon you, they have no trust in you anymore. They have no bond of love with you because you broke that by this demonic ideology that later has plans for them. You know, don't be ignorant, they have a plan to separate you 
from your family and indoctrinate them and educate them and delude them. Where Prophet is giving to us, they should be bonded with you, love you. You're the source of power and protection and nourishment for them. As a result their madad became strong to you and because their love for you, your light is all encompassing on them. They carry you wherever they go. Love carries whom it loves wherever they go. So in this world of difficulty from beginning of time to the last of time and the last of time the most dangerous of times, that it's only through love they will carry us where they go. And when they don't have the understanding yet to do their madad, to do their practices, to do all their wazifas, to do all their awrads because Prophet gave to us, no, no, at the beginning it's love. 7 to 14 it's teaching, 14, 21 they're like adults, you're going to be friends with them. So it means if the love is bonding they carry you wherever they go. As a result your light is all encompassing around them because this is the reality of the soul, this is what's being taught to those who forgot. They grew up and they forgot our way. So the immensity is then children have to be raised with love. And then the family has to do, the one whom has aqal and, and intelligence, they do their zikrs, they do their awrads, they do all their practices because they're the shield that encompasses the entire family. When they do their practices, then that love that the child is relying upon, it sustains them. Why? Because financially they're providing, you're eating, give a roof over their head and houses them. Most important is that their spiritual soul is all around them and the soul is not empty, it's a soul that's doing its practices, building its energy. So we build our energy not for my own sake, I don't need it, who cares what, but they're, they're relying on it. It's like a parent who sits home and doesn't want to make any food for them, you don't want to go out and provide. And they, they sit there and they don't know what to eat. That wasn't your responsibility from Allah and they have no shelter over their heads. But in these days what becomes more apparent is they're relying upon us for protection. They're carrying that love, they're making the madad and then that energy has to help them, shield them, protect them. So this was the sharia which is the natural law. What they do is not natural, unnatural, immoral. Islamic law is the law of nature. What's natural, what comes natural to a being that every creature takes its child and brings it near. To why? Because the whole animal kingdom going to eat it. You don't take your child and put him in a room, shut the door, psychologically begin to now put a trauma on them, they break all their reliance upon you, they build no trust for you. Then they look into the statistics of mass murders and serial killers, they had issues with their mom, they had issues with broken families. It always relates back to issues with familiar ties that disturbed them, broke all of their spiritual energies and then they become broken. And in these days of difficulty and these days of immense horror of what's happening, then they build a bond, they build a relationship, they'll carry that love as their shield where they go. So that your energy is around them at all times. When you understood your home, you'll understand the shaykh. If you don't understand your home, then the concept of the shaykh makes no difference to you either. When you understood your home, that I have nothing to give them, I don't have the energy to give to them. 
And then Allah reminding them, remind them as they were supposed to do in their childhood, they grew up too fast and became too smart for themselves and they got to go back to the sense of love. Because you too as an adult when you have love, you're going to carry now the one whom you love with you everywhere. So when the man of the family realizes that what I'm in need of from my home is beyond my capability of money and providing and giving a roof, I need a madad and support. I see the sicknesses that are coming, I see all of the creatures vying for them, trying to destroy them, manipulate their belief, their systems, their entire soul is in danger. You know if they catch one of these children and, and change the direction of their soul and what they believe and how they want to orient them, not orient towards paradise but orient towards hell. So then it's a reminder that Allah shows then it's same for the adult, it's the madad. As soon as they enter into these associations that hadith is then for the adults too. You'll be with whom you love. Your love was… your responsibility was only to love them. That something so simple seems to be so difficult for people because our ways are a completely different secret. Other ways they think we should sit down, bring out all sorts of fiqr books and start teaching people. Those are for the people whom have recruited themselves for that belief to have fiqr, to have jurisprudence and to read law books and to, 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 to document footnotes. But this way of love is so much more powerful and it appeals to the masses of people whom didn't sign up to memorize jurisprudence but they came in to enter into this way of love that have good character, open your heart man. As soon as you open your heart what happens? Then the love of that person is always with you. And the shield of that one whom you know is more spiritually powerful than yourself is always with you and you carry him and you carry his love wherever you go. And you verify it and you nurture that love. Because with your child you learn every day, I love you Baba, I love you Baba and the child has to hear it all the time. Some children will come and say, I never heard my dad say, I love you. And it's very vile to Prophet because they came to Prophet, I don't know you all this hugging and kissing you do for children, we don't have like that. He said, what can I do for a man who has no rahmah in his heart? Means he was turned off by that type of expression. That they have to hear love, they have to hear bonding, they have to see the closeness, the touching and embracing of, of children so that they understand what love is. Otherwise they're raised in abuse and then they have to be deprogrammed and reprogrammed as adults. But that's not the Islamic way. The Islamic way was through ishq and muhabbat, right? Then as soon as you grew up you said, yeah of course I had an immense love for my father, my father had an immense love for me. Then it was so easy to meet these ashiqeen and then open your heart to love them. And when you love them and approach through love all they need is for your heart to be open and these lights begin to enter into your soul. That I love you with my heart and now my soul is bonded with you. And that's what there was in need of, why? Because that's the madad. As soon as you're bonding with that love and you give your expressions of love, you support, you commit, means everything that shows its love because it's not only through tongue, I say, I love you, it's through the actions that Allah looks to. As soon as they open their heart and take that commitment, the light of those shaykhs are with that person. That becomes their shield, that becomes their energy, that becomes their portal, whatever word people want to use that is familiar for them. 
And as a result wherever that man goes that love is there. For women is Haji Amina, they don't want women connecting with men. That you connect your heart with Haji Amina, Mawlana Shaykh Sultan al Awliya's wife, visualize her, connect your heart with her, ask your questions from her, take from us our teachings. But for the men, connect your heart. As soon as that light begins to come, it's all around you. Now those whom love you will be entitled to that same light and love. And you see how that moves? Because that's what the shaykh is doing. That his life was committed to the service of his shaykh with everything. His entire being was given to them and as a result they dressed him from their Divinely love. And as a, as a result their bayad is true, Allah is with them, Prophet with them and the shaykhs are with them. And as a result of that light with them, that light not leaving. So then whoever loves them brings the whole of that reality to be present with them. And as a result wherever they are somebody connects then all that light is entering into their homes, all that light entering into wherever they go, wherever they move, wherever they walk. And all who love you will now be entitled to that light. And that's how that system of light is moving immensely fast, immensely contagious, right? This love is so powerful, a pandemic of love. It moves so fast versus, no, the other way. Sit as a scholar, I'm going to read to you all these 50 books. You're going to write them, you're going to memorize them. There's nothing of love based on that because I don't love you, I just I have to read these books now. This is a, that's a completely different academia. This system of contagious pandemic love that spreads like wildfire, the shaitan is immensely against that don't talk about love. You know, block the tariqahs, block these ways of muhabbat. Because now we understand through the energy that how real it is. When you love somebody who's spiritually built, spiritually has improved themselves and continuously receiving their fires, that light is with you from a bond of love, not from aqal. It has to not make any sense to your head because your, your head is not the one able to hold them. Your head can convince you all you want, this not right, this not that, this not that, but the heart knows. And since we came to tariqah with La ilaha illallah, La ilaha illallah, nobody knows this ocean of faith. That was with Sayyidina Nuh alayhi salam. He's given to build a ship and everybody cursing him, why are you building this ship? They come say, why are you following the tariqah, why are you following these guys, why are you following this, why are you following that? Because this is a path of love. It doesn't make sense to their brain because it's not supposed to be in the brain, it's supposed to be in the heart. And when you open the heart and you love that energy enters, that energy feels and, and moves all around, that energy gives me a support against demonic attack. That energy gives us support against every type of sickness and ailment that, Ya Rabbi I'm not able to, to, to resolve an issue, please send the madad and support and those whom you love will be with you. And that's the intercession of Sayyidina Muhammad it's the whole aqeedah of Ahlul Sunnah. That the love of Prophet is coming, he's always with you, he sees, what's this, what's that sickness coming? What's this energy that's coming toward them? Immediately intercede. So with love we carry this energy. Then they give us the spiritual practices, do these awrads, do these zikrs, why? To prove you love because love is something that Allah is asking to prove. So now from the shaykh to the student go now to Allah Whether in every salah 
you have to say, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna Muhammadun Rasulullah Why? Allah doesn't know your faith but Allah loves to hear it, wants you to hear it. That verify for yourself and reconfirm to yourself how many times a day, Ya Rabbi I love you and Allah's reply back to his servant and I love you too. Ask me and I give you, ask for forgiveness and I grant you. Why? Allah knows it all, there shouldn't have been any interaction. We could have just come on the earth and said, I know your intention, that's it, you're into charcoal, you're in this direction, you're in that direction. But it's an expression of love. Allah wants to hear from the servant that you testify that there's nothing but Allah and that Muhammadun is the Rasul of Allah So even Allah is asking us, continuously tell me how much you love me. Talk to me and ask me, draw near to me, I'll be closer to you than your jugular vein. And then it moves all the way down the chain, love Prophet more than you love yourself and then the light of Muhammadun Rasulullah is then with the servant, accompanying the servant, shahidan, mubashiran wa nadiran, Allah ayatul kareem describing Qur'an. That he's ever witness over his community and that he sends mubashiran lights upon them and then nadiran continuously guiding and inspiring, stay away from something that's dangerous. And then Allah gave us to the, uh, our lives a shaqeen whom they love Prophet they gave their entire life for that reality and as a result made it easy to move amongst people and to be loved. They love them, open your heart, be with them, be of service to their mission and as a result your heart opens. As soon as your heart opens you carry that light and you carry that light back into your home. And what Sayyidina Musa when he was wandering through the desert and he saw a fire at a distance and he said, perchance I go to that fire to bring back some light back. Because he knew there's a Divine reality and let me go to that reality because nobody leaves Allah empty-handed that I'll take this light and I come back for my community and for my people who will take that light from their ishq and their love for me and it'll be dispensed like a speed of fire it'll be dispensed just by love, not by belief in their head, not by by uh, making logical sense in their mind and convincing somebody in their mind. It's not a mind path, it's just a heart path. Just like with your children, you don't have to convince them to love you. And if you do something's wrong, well you have to love me. No, I don't know why I have to love you, I could have loved anyone else, why I have to love you? It's not something that is through your head, it's through your heart. We pray that Allah open on these holy nights the immensity and the power of ishq and muhabbat. That if they open their hearts how many lights and how much beautific oceans. That's why we celebrate these holy nights as a reminder to them who are at the stations of immense outpourings, immense blessings. Ya Sayyid, Ya Mawlana Shaykh, you are the, the king of ishq and muhabbat in which your kindness was overwhelming to everyone. We gathered and we're giving you the gift of our zikr, our nasheeds, our salawats, all the food that we distribute, all the actions that we're doing is for what? To gain their nazar, their gaze that send your love upon us, send your ishq upon us and fill our hearts with these good characteristics so that they're always with us watching us, guiding us, blessing our family, blessing our children until the, the, the child can reach an age of maturity in which at that time they're responsible to take their bayat with the shaykh, they're responsible now to put the shaykh's love in their heart and do their awrads, their zikrs and their practices. But before that age of maturity they're relying on the love of their parents to have that light in it. And Allah gave an ability, yes you can by loving them. You'll carry who you love in your heart. 
We pray that Allah open us, open our hearts and dress us from the immensity of these blessings and that Allah grant us from the love and the ishq of Sultanin Awliya Ma Shaykh Muhammad Nazim Haqqani in an ever difficult world. And those that are not able to express love and everything is very competitive and conspiratorial that to remind themselves to go back to the way of ishq and muhabbat that when somebody doesn't want to interact with a shaykh or interact with somebody that it only takes love that you have to conquer the ego of personalities and that open the heart to move into the presence of ashiqeen. We pray that Allah bring those whom have that love closer together inshaAllah. Subhana rabbika rabbil izzati amma yasifoon wa salaamun al mursaleen wa hamdulillahi rabbil alameen bi hurmati Muhammad al Mustafa wa bi siri Surat al Fatiha. As Salaamu Alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is Shaykh Nurjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream. Every bit counts. As Salaamu Alaykum wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh.